Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's try our hand on a slightly more difficult problem. Here's our new circuit and we're trying to find the equivalent Norton circuit because that will allow us to find the current through any load resistor we connect between A and B. So what we need to do here is find the Norton resistance and the current resistance so that we can take this original circuit and turn it into the Norton equivalent circuit with a single current source, I sub n, and a single resistance, R sub n, in parallel with the current source. First, we'll find the Norton resistance, which means we take our original circuit, remove any current sources, and set any voltages equal to zero. This circuit will then look as follows. We have an open right here, because we removed the current source. We have a 4 ohm resistor, and here we set the voltage to zero. So that will simply be a circuit line like this. We have the 8 ohm resistor, we have the 5 ohm resistor, and here we have another 8 ohm resistor. That's 4 ohms, 8 ohms, and 5 ohms. And then we still have terminals A and B. And it turns out that the resistance measured between these two terminals can be considered the Norton resistance. All we have to do is figure out what the resistance is between A and B as measured with a circuit that looks like this. Notice it's basically two sets of resistors in parallel. 8, 4, and 8 are in series, and those three combined are in parallel with the 5 ohm resistor. So we get 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 8 is 20. That gives us a 20 ohm resistor in parallel with a 5 ohm resistor. 20 ohms, 5 ohms and connected to terminals A and B. Which means that R sub n is simply equal to the product over the sum, which is 20 times 5 divided by 20 plus 5, which is 100 divided by 25, which is 4 ohms. That means that this is the Norton resistance. The Norton resistance of our circuit, equivalent circuit, is equal to 4 ohms. Now we still need to find the Norton current. How do we do that? We take the original circuit, oh, right here, the original circuit, and we short out the terminals from A to B, and then see how much current would go between A and B, and that would be the Norton current. So let's take our, our circuit. Well, actually, I don't need to redraw it. I can simply say I'm going to short the circuit out like this, and whatever current I have here, that's going to be I sub n. Now notice, if I short the circuit between A and B, and any current that flows in this direction, rather than flowing through the 5 ohm resistor, all of it will flow through the short right here, bypassing the 5 ohm resistor, which means that this acts as if this is not even there. So it's basically like that 5 ohm resistor does not exist. That leaves us with two loops. We have our first loop right here. We can call that loop number one with current I1, and we can have loop number two which goes around like this, let's call that I sub 2, completely bypassing the 5 ohm resistor. We can also say that I1 must be equal to 2 amps, because there's a current source there. I1 is equal to 2 amps. And now what we can do is we can sum up all the voltages around loop 2 and set it equal to 0, because the sum of all voltages around any loop should always add up to 0. The sum of all the voltages around loop 2 must equal zero, so let's go ahead and sum up the voltages. Plus 12 volts, minus the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor, which would be I2 times 4 ohms, that's minus 4 I2, but we go against the current of I1, because I1 is clockwise here, it goes down in this, in this uh, branch, we go against the current I1, that's the voltage rise, plus 4 I1, then we come around the corner, we go across this resistor, which is 8 ohms, that's minus 8 I2. Come around here, bypass the 5 ohm resistor, go through this resistor, which is another minus 8 times I2, and all that adds up to 0. Now that I know that I1 is equal to 2 amps, I can replace I1 by 2. 0 equals 12 minus 4 I2 plus 4 times I1, which is 2 minus 8I2 and minus 8I2. I can combine all I2 terms, minus 4, minus 8, minus 8, that's minus 20, move all that to the other side of the equation, we get a positive 20I2 equals 12, plus 8 is 20, that would be 20, 
and that means I2 equals 20 divided by 20, which is equal to 1 amp. The equivalent Norton current is 1 amp, the Norton resistance is 4 ohms, this becomes equal to 1 amp, and now we have our, res our equivalent circuit, which allows us to find the, the current to the low resistor once we connect this to a low resistor. Let's say we have a low resistor like this, R sub L, we know that the current I through the load in this direction is going to be equal to I Norton, the current provided by the equivalent Norton current, in this case 1 amp, times the ratio of the Norton resistance divided by the Norton resistance plus the load resistor. And if we plug in the numbers that we have, we have 1 amp times 20, oh, no, 4 ohms, 4 ohms divided by 4 ohms plus whatever the load resistor would be, and that will give us the current through the load resistor. And that's how we solve a circuit like this. Oh, let me get out of the way so you can see everything. That's how it's done.